struggle to perform well on. New or struggling teams struggle to perform on. Yeah, and I think G2 struggling teams struggle to perform on it. Yeah, what I mean is, if you're a struggling team, you want to go somewhere simple. Yeah, I want You don't want to go to Villa. No. Um, and I, I just feel like it's going to be the same. You know, more of the same today. Thing I is, think G two are going to take full advantage of that. There's a lot of good tape of G two on this map because I can think of the number of like I can tell you. That's exactly, one positive. Yeah, I can tell you exactly what their game plan is, and I know that Benjamin loves running around downstairs. Like I think I declared in the Demon of Library because he will just sit in that area around Red Corridor. Door. He'll lurk over towards bottom red, for example, and just look skyward with the C4 against teams that always try and push across the top floor. We had that against VP earlier on in the stage when they had to then start sending players downstairs to go and actively challenge him. Is TT9 the kind of team that can go and pull this off against a player like Benja? Probably not. So time will tell. It really is going to come down to, I think, whether or not TT9 have it in themselves to win some big gunfights because this stage has been... Rough. They've been 7-0 twice. It's been it's not been easy. Affair. They did have a close game against VP. I'll give them that. But given what we've seen from VP today, suddenly you start questioning somewhat the legitimacy of a result like that. Ultimately, you know, there's 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 no other way around it. It has been a tough stage for TT9. It has been a tough entry into Siege. And that's putting it nicely. And that is, it's putting it pretty kindly. Oh, um, you know, there's, there's players on that roster that know all about playing in Siege, but coming together as a team has been a tough process. Um, you know, in terms of the results, there's, there's no two ways around that. But, um, you know, TT9... All is still not lost. Nope. And that, you know, again, speaks to the format. And I, I don't hate that. You know, they're going to come out from it. They can go into the knockouts. They get, you know, they can still have, um, you know, that opportunity to, to keep working, to keep trying to turn things around. Um, and, you know, you know, knowing the players on the team, that is absolutely what they're going to be doing. They're going to be putting the graft in. They're going to be trying to, um, you know, get, uh, get every bit of improvement squeezed in between maps as they can do, essentially. Here's a shout out to G2 as well for a very beautiful skin they have for his army. Obviously, his army not in this round. I'm kind of disappointed to see it, but it is a very lovely skin. Had that lower third pop up. Go check it out in the store. Buy all the skins, or as, as Joystick normally says, uh, buy our skins, all that kind of good stuff. Buy some skins. They all look beautiful. Here we go with round one then. G2 starting out on the defense in case you missed it. They have got a lot when it comes to information denial as well, looking in towards the mozzie. They've got the black eyes on side as well. They've got a pre-play C4 ready by the sounds of it too. Expecting that we're not going to see this read now. Do they find Benja? I'm not sure they oh, have. Oh, Kanto. I'm not oh, sure that looks a little bit a no, little bit didn't. easy breezy for he me on the drawn in does. 100 percent didn't see him. 100 percent Goodbye. And that's your knock on. That's, you know, somebody who could have a massive play. It's walk up Astro Stairs. Good start. It's not a good start at all. Could have gone straight up Astro Stairs, would not have been seen, and could oh. have really started having an impact on that top floor. Alamo, you picked up on Nitro Stairs. Alamo is going to pick one up on Tenor, and that's going to leave us now in a four versus three duck. He does go by the wayside along the way. Not ideal, um, but still a good start from G2. Yeah, but not a good start for TT9. Yeah, down to quite early on. We saw the C4 coming out, of course, had that preview on the downstairs. No real gunfight seen to be won by G2 so far. They've just got a couple of freebies to go things through and now TT9 have to kind of pause and figure, okay, what else can we do? And the answer appears to be let's go and hunt Benja, who, as I pointed out earlier on, is not the easiest to track down. This is going to be a little bit like a wild goose chase and as I also said in the pre-game, Benja and C4s downstairs against teams that push across the top floor. It's like bread and butter. They just go so well together. Prono's going to uh, leave that hunt for another day as he heads himself up to the top floor. Um, knows that the Nitro is gone now because one of his teammates just died to it, so not too much of a concern there from verticality. But what he does need to concern himself with is Benja maybe moving back up red stairs, for example, and putting a little challenge onto the flank, which could be dangerous. Kendrew drops down. Uh, he's just going to... Move away through the hatch, maybe, again, looking to see if yeah. the Benja problem can be dealt with. But G2 look extremely comfortable right now. I mean, Benja's still unbothered. Like I said, the Demon of Library is still lurking around it, and the dragon can smell that there's an intruder in the lair. They wanted to go looking for the man, and he just slips as well by the looks of it. Past Prana, who's on the upstairs, waiting for his time to strike, but there is still 45 seconds to play with. So really, he's in no panic to try and push in on the side of TT9. They've all but given up on trying to look at the site as Benja... 
He's ripping heads, Tim. He's got a triple kill in the round. He's been hit through the soft wall as well. If he spins and gets this, it's going to be absolutely diabolical. Prano rounding in here on full HP. Does he know about him down on this floor? No, he does not. But has a sneaking suspicion. Gets one close out. But we're down to 25, Tim. This round's done and dusted. Benji's just waiting for his opportunity. He wants that 4K on the round. He knows that Prano's going to continue pushing to try and find him. But I don't think he knows that Prano's moved from behind. And he's just going to keep focused on that door in front of him for the time being. And Prano's going to step in to the line of sight. There wow. we go. 4K for Benja on the round. It will be Benja 4K rather than Benja 2K. I played with the Benja 3K in game. It's the full set then. Yeah. I haven't seen Benja 5K yet. No, we haven't. Benja 1K, we don't talk about him. No. It's just not particularly inspiring. We don't see it very often. I might change myself to Benja 0K. <laughs> Probably be accurate. Um, <laughs> Can I check what about we call fresh Benja TK? Very true. I mean, it's not really fresh, generally. Yeah, it's Benji, it's Benji TK. Or this is TK. Let's get a full stat together and name ourselves Benja something K. Do you think? Great, yeah, I'm in for it. But speaking of Benja, again, it's almost like I want to stream at the screen and just go, look, I told you it was coming! The Demon of Library sits down there around red, lurks inside a library, gets himself four kills. TT9 put together a really half-eight effort to go and clear him out, and you can see the outcome. Now, just to remind you, with, B with VP losing their game so decisively against BDS, G2 need to win five rounds. They finish first place. They get the bye into the second round of the playoffs. All they've got to do is win five rounds, not even win the game, just win five rounds. With the way that first round's gone, um, honestly, I think G2 are going to be taking the top spot. Could be a doddle. More than likely. Um, it was decisive from them, and it just starts to shed a little bit of light on the problems at T9. Um, you know me, I'm not. I'm usually one to try and find the positive, and I will say that Benja played it fantastically. But going into somewhere like Basement, the due diligence has to be done. It can't be a casual flick of the drone on the way through to, you know, it's such a complex area. that There are so many alcoves, so many shelves, so many barrels, so many things that can be hidden behind. If you're going to go in that way, you've got to commit to it. And, you know, it's little things like that that are going to really mount up against this TT9 squad. I think they've shot out their drones already. There are friendly drones, that is, with Kanto to make sure that he cannot be misdroning anymore. Already have both of his drones offline inside about 20 seconds at the start of this round. So he's purely on old school Ash duty, looking to tear his way through the map. But you've already seen Benja lurking off here, just letting the visitors take over his home for a short amount of time here inside a library as they try and work their way more laterally straight across towards the push rather than worrying about what's going on upstairs. Doki's going to open the hatch just to give a little uh, extraction route for the thorn that was playing inside of there. Just going to give some options to move out of study for Benja to keep himself slippery, keep himself moving around the map. Kanto, um, again, just working through that bottom floor, not able to cut the floors with anybody just yet. I think G2 are probably scratching their heads a bit like, where are they actually coming from here? What's the game plan? And now that they've heard the breaching round go off, that signal's okay then. They're trying to push around red. They're going to be in library. This is where G2 start to close the net a little bit and sure enough Doki has got right up against them and found one down inside of bikes now you might have Benja coming down main stairs on the back side as well there's just so much potential threat okay no he's on red stairs but again G2 have got closer and closer and are looking to really restrict TT9 here Prano potentially though coming in with a really good flank assuming he finds the jump on Benja that's the thing he's got to get the kill and he's not going to do because Benja knows he's coming he finds his man it's as easy as that and that leaves G2 now in a five versus one as two more kills fly yeah. in it's a flawless round and this is not looking good. I don't want to jump the gun, Des. I don't want to go in too soon, but the fundamentals just aren't there from TT9 and G2 are punishing them. Big time. Big time as well. Yeah, again, I, like, if you look right down on paper what it was that TT9 were trying to do, they were trying to go laterally. They weren't looking to try and clear the entire map, just relatively direct towards site. Okay. But it was kind of like Koi back on border when they were attacking into secret. It lacked any real bite. It lacked any real pace, any urgency. And without those two things, pace and urgency, you lack the ability to capitalize on mispositions coming out of the other side. You know, for a few seconds, you had jo Doki up inside. I was about to call him Jokey there, which is a brilliant name. Why have I never said that in my life before? Hold on to that one. I'll keep that one in the back game. pocket for when he has a bad game, most definitely. You had Doki upstairs inside a trophy statue. You had Ben off towards main stairs. Two players weren't off site. If they had a read on that, 
that was a potential 5v3 waiting to happen. But they open up the uh, museum wall, for example, that indicates to G2 what's going on. No one really looks to move forwards, and G2 just kind of get themselves ready. They move Benja towards Red Stairs. You get Doki poking his head down, Astro and coming up through bikes, for example, to get a freebie. There's just no real onus or urgency being shown by DT9, and I think this is where G2, probably as you say, will just turn this into a 6 0 half unless they get a little bit cocky and give away a round or two. Well, speaking of that, Benja's going to be stood at the main door. I think he's certainly earned the right to have a look and see if he can get them off to a flying start. How patient will he be? He's going to have to be very patient at the minute because nobody from DT9 is heading in that direction. But G2 at the minute for the first two sides, showing a great command of the map um, and just being on top of things really winning every fight that they come across they're always um, seeming to be in advantageous situations I think All there's right. errors from TT9 there as well but G2 then for example in that last round Benja just on the red stairs knew where Prono was the information always seems to be there for them at the minute Medics, can we see if the living hatch has been reinforced, please, on the downstairs? Because I see the Amaro and just always think about the basement play that can come out for this. Go down the floor, please. And up a little bit. Uh, it has been opened, actually, so they could get into the basement and zip up from there, but I think that's exactly why G2 are trying to be nice and careful about this as well. Thank you very much, Medics. That's the one I was referring to. He's kind of not bothered from the off, so I think they've kind of read, look, hatch is open. There is a very good chance someone is playing down there and looking to disrupt us. We're just not going to play into that. Let's play the round out a little bit more straight and narrow. Alamo is going to pick up Noah for an opener. That's three rounds, three opening kills um, for G2. So certainly Drunk. improving right. those entry stats um, as oh, the boy. game goes on. This, this just swing. There just seems. Swing. There you go. It's there's just such you know a, what I love a lack of awareness from TT9. I love. I mean, okay, I love that. That's pretty nice. Blur, you should not have been missing that on a guy point blank range. But I love that even when there's the, you know, they're stomping them so far, literally crushing the side of TT9, they're still showing them respect to swing as a two. Oh, yeah. You have one player left side of the door, Doki from the right came in. Together they went for the swing and secured the kill. That's the kind of respect that, you know, is still worth showing. You have to show it. You have to show it. Um, you know, and it's important that we show TT9 the respect as well because ultimately you've got Kendrew, Kanto, Prano. You know, I'm not discounting the others, but you've got three players there who have got an, an abundance of experience at this level and who have proved their ability over the years. And so, you know, the, the honest answer is, you know, yes, we have to call it as we see it. And TT9 are, are, are struggling against G2 here as well as they have against other teams. But ultimately, we know that this set of players are certainly capable of more than they're showing us. Um, it's just that as a team, they just don't seem to be able to, to gel things together at the minute. Well... I think it's about time, given we're speedrunning this game, let's get Fresh in for a quick chat. Fresh, that was uh, a disappointing first quarter for TT9. Yeah, I think so. I'm actually going to focus on a positive for G2, first and foremost, and then we're going I to I mean, TT9. you've got an abundance to pick from. Yeah, so the, the first positive is that they're actually playing together. You've just picked up on it. When they played against VP, and on this map, on Villa in particularly, they were not playing together. Doki was off on the entry that day. He wasn't bringing a mate along with him when he was swinging stuff. So it's great for G2. They've seemingly fix their problems and also the site rotation playing living library was a big thing they actually have would you believe an 80 percent 83 percent defensive win rate on living library and an 80 percent on dining five kitchen. and six wins yeah they have never defended trophy statutory successfully in the last six months so that's why they've not gone there now for tt9 it's it looks like they've not done the homework the team play is lacking it seems like they are very very unaware they look shell-shocked again I did wonder what word was going to come out there, Tim, whether it was going to be uh, well, particularly the thing harsh is, or uh, pretty fair. Looking, that's fair. Looking at the player cams through the time out there, and, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you what the players are thinking or whatever. You know, I don't know. Um, UK Massive! There you go. Just saying. All English-speaking rosters. Everyone except BDS Plenty of UK and representation. Have a player from the UK on their roster. As I was now saying, he's got to take over a French team, and it's fine. As I was saying, the player cams there... For me, like I said, you know, I'm not going to say how the players feel or what they're thinking, but what I will say is it appeared like the weight of the world was on them. You know, the the the, the, the expressions were very sullen, very serious. Um, you know, it, it seemed apparent um, from those player cams that, you know, they, they, they're feeling the pressure and they're feeling the frustration. And I'm sure that they are. Look at Prano's situation. He's getting pinged out by a cam. He gets taken down super easily on the sledge with no awareness that, that that's even coming. Like, that has to change it has to change and in the round they bring an iq there is no valkyrie very good the one thing i will give is 
Yeah, TT9 obviously is an organisation of relatively fresh into Siege, and what I understand is they've actually got a very long-term vision here. Yeah, had a chat with a couple of the players. Would love to see it. They definitely weren't saying, "Oh, you know, we want you to win the first stage," or you know, even potentially finish top four. But you know, put on a show at the very least. Yeah, I imagine there probably is a little bit of pressure of saying, "Guys, look, we we put a lot of trust in you. Like you built this roster." But it is struggling to deliver, you know, barely even a few rounds in a game here. Again, outside of VP, they haven't won a single round against any other team. This is like, you know, so far below the standard of what many would expect if you're coming into the game that it's going to sting. This time yet. This time yet, Des. Let's, let's play the positive side and see what TT9 no, can do. No, that's in your the job. Set. That's exactly what I'm doing. Let's see mine. what they can bring in the second half of their attack. If they can get around, maybe it'll be, you know, the seal broken and the confidence will start to grow. I think there's, you know, maybe an element of that for TT9. It's about getting a win or two. Like, you know, start getting those positive halves, getting those results, finding your confidence, finding, um, you know, that energy wherever you can um, and working from there. So let's see if they can get around here and do that. Nades are going to be going in to clear out Utility. Benja just holding a vertical angle at the minute. I'm not sure that he's going to find too much joy though. Kanto being pretty careful for the time being as he's entering into a gunfight. The thing is here, Ben just got the vertical ready and waiting as well. Good smoke onto the 90 window to force the player away too. No, I heard you cough and I was just like, you're not the one being smoked out, Tim. It's okay. An entry comes in finally as well. Kendrick finding the first one in the game for TT9. Alamal though with a straight response back onto Noah. And a good trade coming in. Literally bullet for bullet between two of the players up in towards Troph, in towards Statue. I always mix those up. Kendrick into another one as well. So they are rolling through here actually. And maybe they've finally done it, Tim. Benja is the last one left standing. Kendrick really making himself hurt in this round with a 3k. This is the opportunity. Oh, Rano is down at the minute to a frost mark. That's a 2v1 for a short time. They will get him back on his feet, I'm sure. Benja does have an opportunity though. Manager, to look at the accuracy of he that. Scares Absolutely me. beautiful. Kill onto Kendra who has picked up the other kills so far. Interestingly, G2 all watching the perspective of Benja. There's no information coming into him here. As I say, that dorky flicks off onto the default cams. 15 but seconds. Likely that there's not too much to be said. I mean, they've got themselves a mozzie cam somewhere as well, so they have an idea as to what's going on, but I just fear TT9 leaving this far too late. They're going to try and hit games room, rotating all the way around. Finds one, but you're pushing into Death Alley here as well. Just when it felt like they might finally have this going their way, it's going to start falling apart. Kanto's going in for the plant. I don't think Benja will be able to get there in time. Kanto can get up and spin around, but can he win the gunfight? Now he's got the reverse angle, which is exactly what he wanted. Kanto giving himself away. Benja really wants to try and make this work, but my God, is it a risk? No way. No way. Oh, Kanto! He's still got it. Can't find the 1v1 fight there, Benja. He's going to be kicking himself. There was a real opportunity. Um, I, I won't go so far as necessary to call it a misstep from Benja, but if he's a little bit quicker about pushing into sight, he catches Kanto planting. And that, the, what I'm seeing on the player cams there is a world of difference from what we saw a couple of rounds ago as the tactical timeout, and that's what I'm saying. <laughs> now we've got a few smiles, we've got some laughter, and it just looks you like what. that pressure is lifted after they've got a round in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny. <laughs> okay, be happy, boys. Be happy. I won't say any more. I think it's unfair. The thing is, I, th I think it's a good thing for them. No, I agree. They've got a round. It's just a, it's break it's the seal funny, a little bit. It's funny to celebrate not being seven and zeroed, and that's your metric for a good game. You got to have some metric, there's. You've okay. got to have something. I just think it's, in even within Villa, you know, in isolation, not thinking about the group stage as a whole, I think it's a positive for them. They get themselves around. Obviously, it's good. It's it's not ideal. They nearly lost a, a 3v1. Um, you know, but they get the round. They get it done. And like I say, maybe it just breaks that mental block a little bit. This is a... I'm, I'm fascinated by this round now. Are they able to go back to back? Is it... Does it break the mental block? Can they get it done again now? I mean, if you can start building up a couple of rounds on the attack, suddenly you start saying, oh, two attacking rounds on Villa. Most teams would take that. You don't want to complain about it if you're winning the offsites. I mean, what's regarded as an offsite for G2 maybe is a, a very different conversation overall. Well, let's see how things shape up then as we get started with this round. A little bit of a change coming in for G2. Got the Goyo on side here, a blur. And the Mozzie has been the kind of the go-to throughout all of these rounds for Benjamin. Maybe we just didn't mute historically. Said here, trading things out to play on the Mozzie and immediately looking to challenge onto the front door. TT9 last time were able to pick up the entry kill. If they can do that again, it's obviously gone uh, gone a long way towards helping them um, accelerate themselves through the round now then. 
drone is just going to be working. Well, Doki able to pick up Kanto as he just that goes sprinting in there, unable to even challenge in return. And that's G2 back to their entry ways. I love how he's just used that as bait in a way. I don't think it was intentional, but... Well, maybe it was, because the drone was in a bit of a weird place. You wouldn't just leave it there normally. But Kanto picks up on it on the IQ, charges forward, thinking, oh, there's just no way that there's a player sat near this. And sure enough, Doki was there, ready and waiting. Here he comes now, having broken out the Claymore. Now the players must surely be aware. Surely you're aware. No, they are not. It's a freebie picked up as Noah goes down, and now he's out here looking for more. He can smell blood, Tim. It's just that word again, Des, that I, I used previously, awareness. Um, you know, TT9 well, need to make sure that they're not getting flanked like that, not getting crept up on. Kendru Giesler managed to get two, though, and that levels us up at three versus three. Not bad. If you rush here, you can hear the sound of the ADS going down, but no, Kendru. Andrew doesn't take Man. the opportunity and Alamo manages to get the kill. I don't know if he was convinced it was bait, but really could have gone for a fast move there and got a free kill onto the Jaeger. Instead, pays for it with his life. And now they know that Red is the push. T4 comes out. Not quite close enough to Prana, but they know exactly what's going on. Oh, oh, oh. I think he didn't mean to type there. <laughs> Prano, <laughs> Definitely a mistake. Prano has a wry chuckle there as the nerd bounces back at him. I think that's enough said about that. Um, three versus one, it stands at the minute. Um, Prano just using that time as an opportunity. You know, sometimes we say that the teams will be looking to have a chat with each other. I don't think that's probably the case of TT9. Prano just using that time to see if he can get himself an opportunity. So maybe somebody pokes their head round the corner and all of a sudden it's a 1v2 and it's a lot more winnable. I think it was barbed wire on the second half of Red Stairs, though. No, okay, never mind. Up he goes. They don't know that he's here, but maybe we'll have a sneaking suspicion. I'm watching that top side as another coil canister is burned down, and sure enough, there was Alamar ready to collect him coming out of Master Bedroom. For me now, this is, um, you know, in terms of TT9, this is all about getting as many rounds as you can. Um, I think what we've seen from the first five rounds, I believe G2, you know, are likely to go on and win this. I'd be surprised if the result was anything else. TT9, their victory needs to come every single round that they win. The more that they can get rounds on the board, it at least gives them something to go into open quals with, you know, it's something to work on at least. Um, you know, just try to build um, a little bit of positivity. Boys? Uh, boys? Bomb located by attackers. Boys? <laughs> For God's sake. G2 know they need another round, don't they? <laughs> okay. They're not allowed to start playing. I imagine this is you can't start playing until the round actually starts. Strap room. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Okay. I mean, this is cruel. <laughs> yeah, it is a little bit Kendry, you're right. Oh, okay. And go. Go. <laughs> no. Yeah, there we go. They're off. For God's sake. TT9. The TT9 just need to go like tearing oh. in at this point. I think just and that looks like exactly what they're doing. We can see Nor and Kanto oh already God. approaching the building, he's looking to get aggressive. The not too much of a surprise. Benger is going to hold that angle though. Not too much. There's a little bit of work going on on site, but G2 knowing they're going to have to be ready for the gunfights, and they oh are. As Alamai manages to pick up Kendru with the opener. <laughs> what do you even say? Oh, they finally found the drone. I mean, we were enjoying watching from that perspective. I quite enjoyed that angle. <laughs> Surely not. <laughs> no, he's just like, no, just run ahead. I ain't, ain't got to stop you. I thought he was really going for it, though. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. They don't even get him on the trade. Is the player. It was Prana coming in behind him, and they still don't get the trade out. <laughs> This is heartbreaking. They haven't got a single kill yet, Tim. It really is. Benja's going to keep roaming around in basement. Uh, the Butcher of Basement, I think we'll start calling him. He's absolutely unstoppable the butcher down there. Butcher of Basement, the Demon of Library. He's unstoppable down there. No, he's just so slippery. It's like a drone can't get near him. He just gets kill after kill. I start racking up some titles. It'd be like a, an episode of Game of Thrones after five minutes if he carries on at this rate. Still, I think TT9, they're trying to sniff any way they can to get this round back, but I think most know when it comes down to a three versus five, things are done. Even bringing out the Lion Scan in case there was a potential run out coming through from Artside, that's just how this game is going. 
Benjo working his way back into Memorial there. Just going to get a little bit closer into sight. Not overstaying his welcome down in the basement. There you go. He's just going to hide himself away in the corner. Alamay is actually going to support him here. I think they're going to just try and maybe bait somebody in. If Alamay takes the, um, the initial engagement, it just takes the focus away from that corner. And if TT9 are, are pulled into a fight there, um, Benja could well get himself another freebie as they come around the corner. Prano is going to be on the drones, though. They've still got four left, so there's no real excuses for TT9 here to not be uh, utilising those and at least getting as much information as they can. <laughs> Reinforcements going down with 60 seconds still to go. Oh, I mean, maybe they read that there was a push coming in from this side instead and they tried to adapt and now it's just a firefight over a doorway that we're not going to see them losing out on even when Benj is the sacrificial lamb and Prano comes down and finds one more. He's in a one versus three. One behind painting that I think he knows about. Great little spray coming in and down goes Alamau. Still two left though with 30 seconds to play. Can Prano and his trusty spear get this one over the line, Tim? We know he's got the ability. He's still got one of those nano boosts left. It's on cooldown at the minute. It's available cool now down. so that he can juice himself back up again if the opportunity presents. Nitro comes out, steps back. Fancy footwork keeps him away from it he is going to take the nano boost as he goes but he's playing into the man behind the mirror and it's going to be virtue who manages to take him down and g2 go 5-1 on the half uh, i wouldn't be surprised if in the next round we see a call for the knife round tim it's at that sort of stage tt9 well g2 have done what they needed that was the fifth round that they needed G2 Such will convert. Yeah, you can see Dorky celebrate. They know that five rounds was the threshold, um, and that is going to confirm top spot for them in Group A. That's very true. It's and a buy along with it. Okay, Alamal. Okay. Okay. Wrong game, friend, but I appreciate it. <laughs> they just took this time just to be able to, knowing they'd be on camera, just have a little show for us. Even Blur's feeling it. Virtue and Benja, the two karma members of the team, unsurprisingly. Yeah, they certainly are. Um, would you, which, who would you beat him if you were a G2 player? Who would you be most like, do you think? If, assuming you and I were good Benja, enough to Benja, obviously. Beat. Yeah? Top fragging. <laughs> assuming you were a great fragger, which player would you most be like in terms of personality? Um, I don't know. I, I, can't tell you, I think you'd be like a Virtue kind of guy. Yeah, he seems pretty... Chill. Quiet and chill but, and just... But, kind of, but like, is the, is the voice of reason and calmness in the team? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I do spend a bit of time as a voice of reason, I think. Yeah, you'd be dorky, just chaos. <laughs> Alamo's like gone past chaos, though, so I don't think I'm I that gonna far say, gone. I was going to say, yeah, Alamo's transcended, hasn't he? Really, beyond <laughs> yeah. it. I'm not that far gone. <laughs> Righty, let's see if TT9 can get much done here in second half. On to the defence they go. It is a long hill to climb, but on the defensive side of Villa, you tend to favour teams to have a bit of a better showing than maybe you would on the attack, Tim. Absolutely. It's the opportunity for TT9. Like I said, this game... Are you still coughing, by the way? <sighs> it's been about three weeks now. I know. That's what um, I mean. I appreciate the concern. Um, yeah, it's been about three weeks. I mean, my job maybe doesn't help. Um, it, I, I get better and better, and then I do a couple of days of casting, and it, it gets worse. sort of sets me back a little bit. <laughs> um, but don't worry. I'm, I'm surviving. Uh, my voice at least sounds fairly normal this week. I watched back um, our play day one and two, um, and it, it's, it was certainly apparent that I was... Uh, a I thought you sounded unwell. fine, Tim. Was it? it was apparent that I had a bit of a head cold. I was a little bit unwell. But, I love um, your dulcet tones. Back to at least more normal now, if not completely. Tim, you'll never be normal. You're from the north. Very true. Virtue is going to head in through the barrels. He's going to swing the sledgehammer, get himself access. Ooh, ooh, hey, ooh, we're going to have the vertical ooh, name from Dorky, and it takes down Kendrew, who was just trying to watch at the hatch. For me, Des, if TT9 want to improve, those are the things that they can improve. Like, you know better than to stand at that hatch. It's avoidable. Well, as soon as you see the floor holes, you, it's just avoidable. Like, you just know what's going on. But the thing is, G2 love vertical explosives. I mentioned it already with Benja playing the C4 from below back in the first half. If it's nade kills here on the attack, it doesn't really matter to him. He'll send them all skyward anyway and send TT9 to the Shadow Realm with a flawless first round attack. Second flawless round for G2 then inside of the seven rounds that we've seen so far. Um, 
it's it's really just sort of running away from TT9 now. There's very little that we can say, in fairness, um, you know, other than to, to, to wish for improvement, really. You know, we would, um, as much as everybody else, love to see, um, you know, that uh, that quick improvement to, to have them competitive. But at the minute, it just doesn't look like it's going to be the case. G2, um, they will look to come out and get this close down, I would imagine. They know there's an opportunity um, to get this done now in, in style. They're going to the top of the table anyway. They've already secured that, um, but they can finish that with a 7-1. Well, TT9 probably won't make it to 9 at this point, Tim. Seven rounds in, and this one may well be the eighth and final that will play between these two teams and will end both of their group stages. So I think it's going on Aviator and Games, but I think, Tim, we all know which way it's going to go on Aviator and Games. It certainly looks likely. Um, it's a... As I, I've said it a couple of times, I said it's so difficult because I look at the net and I know that you know I've, I've cast these players for years, um, and I know that this isn't really representative, and so you, you, I, I'm, I'm urging them to to get a couple of rounds and to um, you know start finding their feet a little bit. But you know maybe we're going to have to wait for the open qualifiers. Maybe we're going to have to wait for stage two to to see that actual transformation. But um, for the time being, it doesn't look likely that it will come here on Villa. On a scale of 1 to 10, how bored do you think Blur and Virtue have been this game? Just holding those angles. You know, just hoping something happens that you get to get involved in a gunfight. I mean, Virtue gets to juice them up with nanobots this time. Yeah, I mean, there is that. At least he gets to interact. Blur gets to go fishing from below. I'm going to pick up the... I mean, interestingly, you've got Doki on the Carly and you've got Blur playing on the Yana instead. They have no hard breach. They just don't care. They're just going for broke. They're just going in looking for kills, I think. Um, Alamo does manage to use the Kludge drone to steal that Maestro turret. The glass Whoa. will be smashed, but he will still be able to open it and zap. I don't know if it was quite open at the time when the melee That is a really good in. point. Um, so I, oh, we'd, no. have to, we'd have to have a look. It could oh have been God. still open at the time when the melee came in. It might have been destroyed. Um, <laughs> Doki's winding back the ears to COD4 here, I think, as well. Oh, it's a C4 from Kanto. Not the usual sort of engagement you'll see a Akali taking um, with the long long range sniper Honestly. rifle I'll be honest it's not the best entry weapon but I'm sure that Doki knows that uh, we found ourselves five versus four then as it was Kanto who was able to take him down half damage done vertical nade comes in not going to be any good from Benja Master you will have to try again bless Benja he's still taking it so seriously playing nook fishing with nades for example yeah he could be running something else right now and having a bit of fun but nope still playing the game on the straight and narrow Kanto's just lurking around now, seeing if he can pick up another one. Can't get the Maestro camera. Nope. Um, Prano will stay in control. He's had that one open, so he was able to shoot out the clutch drone of Brava. Benja's going to work his way up main stairs. Does take a goo man along the way. He's going to have to pull that out at some point. As I say, he would continue taking damage if he didn't, um, but didn't want to find himself challenged by the lesion running to the top of the mm. stairs either. Kanto on the downstairs, Geese on the shotgun on the upstairs. Hmm. I think those yellow pings coming through to let them know what's going on. Does he know that this is open up? If not, he's in for a ball to hurt. Even the shotgun comes out and he doesn't get a lick of damage back on towards Benja. No! What? He hits him mid-reload as well. One bullet was enough. Benja just showing his quality through and through there. Virtue, Virtue manages to take down Kendrew. And, you know, all um, for all the obvious statements aside, G2, I will say their gun skill has been sharp today. There's so many headshots flying in, so many um, great kills. The last two come in. Benja Alamo find the final man. TT9, they will see themselves limp out of stage one with another 7 1 loss. And it is to the open qualifiers for them. But Looking more on the positive, G2 get the five rounds they need. They leapfrog Virtus Pro at the top of the table and they will have the bye going into those major playoffs.